Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Addington News. Darren Williams, before we get into this, that's an outstanding photo showing Addington in all of its splendour. Yeah, look, it was taken by Christchurch City helicopters who were flying over last week. It wasn't arranged and uh, they managed to send it to us, but it's uh, it's one of those shots that we, we don't see very often. I think I've flown in a couple of times when race meetings have been on and uh, it's pretty rare that you can actually fly anywhere close enough to see the track, but with the Greyhounds on as well and, and being able to see both tracks there, uh, it was quite a cool shot. So we've shared it on Facebook and uh, the helicopter company shared it as well. And gee, it's been viewed a few times. People have gone, that's actually a very cool shot at night. So it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's not cool, Darren, is... It's always tough at, uh, at these times, obviously, for the families, but um, these people were associated with Addington for a very long time. Jack Mulcahy started, I think, it was over 25 Cups. I think he started about the time Rion Murtha started commentating the Cups, somewhere in that vicinity anyway. Uh, but Jack passed away uh, recently. His son, Steve, is heavily involved through his uh, job as a, as a steward and has been for a very long time. So um, massive contribution from him to the sport. Yeah, look, um, I just had a bit to do with Jack when I was at HRNZ. Of course, he was a cadet officer uh, before Natalie Gamerson, uh, very passionate about the sport. A lot of fun to be around Jack. He was always good fun, uh, looked after the, the cadets and the junior drivers and did it with a bit of a bit of fun as well as uh, looking after the education and that as well. So, look, um, very sad time uh, for Jack and, and the, the more Jack's family. Um, so thoughts go out to them and uh, and also, unfortunately, we've had the passing just recently of a, a, a long-time staff member at HR, uh, at Addington Raceway, I should say, and Bev Little uh, looked after all of the toad operation, the allocation of toad operators way back when we had an awful lot of them on course, uh, but not only for Addington, for the entire Canterbury region, Bev looked after. So uh, very sad for Bev, for Andrew uh, and the family. Um, Daniel, the grandson, actually works here on race night looking after Stride Master for us. So look, our thoughts go out to the entire family there. A very sad occasion uh, with Bev's passing last week. Yeah, I was lucky enough to work with Bev for a number of years too, Darren. And uh, yeah, her contribution certainly hasn't gone unnoticed. So your yeah, condolences there. Two things that have happened recently at Addington, Robert and Jenna Dunn go past three figures. Yeah, that didn't take long. They put up the hundreds, no. so uh, Jenna's having a, a great old time doing that. Uh, not sure she actually loves the limelight, but we rope her in for interviews on occasions. And, uh, of course, Diamond Racing have a very powerful uh, Facebook page and website that they look after as well and, and pump out a lot of information, as a lot of other trainers do, and we try and share as many of those uh, on our pages on, on race day on the Addington website if, if trainers have horses in. But congratulations to them, 100 wins at Addington. Yep, certainly. Uh, got a lot happening in the New Zealand Cup, the IRT New Zealand Cup sphere at the moment. Um, Membership-wise, though, tell me a little bit about that and uh, what people need to do if they want to be a member of Addington Raceway and the New Zealand Met. Yes, yeah, so look, two things there. Uh, Addington.co.nz for all of this information. Uh, the membership is available for renewal now online, so people can go in and renew their, renew their membership. And if you want to become a member, uh, there's an application form there uh, that you can fill in as well, and that'll be followed up by the staff. All right, what about CUS, uh, Cup Hospitality? IRT Cup Hospitality goes on sale now. General admitting tickets uh, the 1st of September. Yep, so Hospo's on sale now, and again, they're on the site. Uh, I think already more than 60 percent has been sold so it's flying out the window and it will be sold out very early last time it was uh, in the middle of august or so it was sold out so uh, that's that's available now and you can look at the brochure and look at what's available other ticketing general admission uh, the lawn area punders lounge area all of those sorts of things will go on sale on the first of september so again keep an eye on the facebook page keep an eye on the website for all of that information and I have been asked a couple of times during this week about owner's um, activity on the day. Uh, there will be an owner's marquee, which we launched a couple of years ago before we got into this COVID mess. And it was a uh, you know, raving success because they were the right side of the winning post uh, to be able to see what they needed to see. They had their own marquee. They had their own lawn area and still access to the seating bowl. So all of those things will happen, plus there'll be a couple of more surprises with that marquee to be announced in the future. But... Each owner of a horse, if they're in the horse, will get two tickets 
onto the course and into that area. Um, and if it's a syndicate, that's limited to 10 tickets for that syndicate. Uh, so that's how that will work. Uh, and there's a wee bit more information about logistics and how that will work to make that a little bit more uh, simple, we hope, on the day. One thing that will happen this year is it will be cashless across the course using waiver, using a wristband that you load your money onto, that you simply wave across to pay for things. And the efficiency of that, the efficiency of being able to serve people quicker and not having to handle cash and then count cash back to people and all those things makes the whole operation more seamless. So it'll be a bit of a change for some people, we know that. Uh, but we need to move with the times. That's how events are run around the world. Um, and most events in Canada and New Zealand are run the similar way now. So it just speeds things up. So that's one of the things that you'll hear about more about that as we move forward. But cup meeting is really starting to build now. Uh, just come out of another cup meeting, which we're turning into weekly events just about. Uh, and it's exciting. We're, you know, we're actually going to have yeah. people here this year, not have to go through the pain that we went through last year. So it's going to be cool. Yeah, and some of that stuff you're talking about, it's about customer experience and giving them a good experience because we want them to not only come back to a cup meeting but come to other race meetings. Darren, you're talking about turnover regularly uh, on this segment and I think it's been very beneficial for people who are interested in that side of the business and Addington continues to perform. Yep, so we had a really good look at this for the last 12 meetings. So I've run six lots of dual meetings a week, so including racing every Sunday. So we're, we're six meetings through that. We've got three more weeks to go. Had a look yesterday at the combined revenue, the GBR, so the revenue that is the money uh, after the bets, the winning bets have been paid out. That pool of money, less all of the stake money that's been paid in the cost of running the meeting. And so far for those 12 meetings, there's a positive of almost $600,000 that goes back into the code's coffers, into HRNZ's coffers. So as we say, these meetings are lower stake race meetings, even though the, the Friday stakes are still relatively good. Uh, it means that they are profitable as we move to race meetings where we have group races and the races like that, unless the stake uh, unless the turnover um, increases dramatically, uh, and it does increase, but not so much dramatically, um, then the profitability obviously falls because you're paying a higher stake. So whilst 600,000 in the kick sounds really good now, that will be used up for other races. And it's that balance that, that the code and the clubs have to make to make that work. So um, to be honest, 600K for 100K a week, pretty good. Pretty pleased yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Should be right. We need to get into our preview for this week 11 on Friday night, 8 on Coaster Hare race day on Sunday. Now, John Hare, better known as Coaster, of course, uh, has been a huge contributor to the sport, in particular, Addington Raceway lines up a lot of horses. And well, a couple of years ago, he said to me, I'd like to sponsor one of these uh, quieter days. So put the money up. We've finally worked out a day that suits him and his owners, and you'll see the race names accordingly, acknowledging that. Yeah, that's going to be good fun on Sunday. We've got, you know, a number of trainers that we're working with. Uh, we've got the, the Leatherby Racing Stables Owners Day coming up. We've had, obviously, Often Racing and Regan Todd have a have an Owners Day and a, an Open Day. I think Trent Yesberg's had one. As I said, a lot of other trainers are active in the um, media world now as far as social media. So it's really good. And we're, we're wrapped to have Coaster on board for, for Sunday. And I'm sure it'll be a bit of fun. Uh, no doubt. He does uh, enjoy himself on an occasion. If you want to have a bet, I like better than a Diva race four, number one. That's without going through the whole preview. And uh, race five, number four, Harrison, who you're going to hear uh, about a wee bit because it was pretty unlucky in a fresh condition last time. Absolutely. So let's get into the full preview for this uh, Friday night. We've got a couple of meetings to go, obviously, Friday next week and then the Winter Rewards meeting on uh, the 31st, Sunday the 31st. But let's rip into this one. Race one gets underway at 4.47. It's the IRT, Your Horse, Our Passion, Mobile Trot, 1,980 metres. Yeah, as is quite often the case with race with IRT. I think Mixed Faith can go back to back. Gee, there was a lot to like about the way she savaged the line last time, Darren. She was fresh up for Brad Williamson and just chased down Lorena Del Sur, who subsequently won. So I know she's got the outside barrier, but I think she's got a bit of quality, this girl. So happy to be with her. 
Coley Trouble was a good winner last time. Um, Blair Orange did the steering on that occasion. Goes to a mobile, I think it's for the first time, but, uh, you know, really, really ch chased the line down well too. So I'd give it a chance. Cody Banner gets back into a, a suitable race. I know it's not the, the smoothest trotter you'll ever see out there, but uh, John Dunn driving this week, uh, I'll give it uh, an each way prospect. And Ruby Seddon was first up for Johnny Cox and actually made up a lot of ground, very noticeable off the video. And of course, you can get all of those at HRNZ. So I've gone with nine, six, eight, and five. Race number two, as always, is the first leg of the early body on two, three, four, and five. Woodland Stud Mobile, 1980 at 516. Seems every week we're talking about Fred Fletcher and uh, Sam Thornley, and I'm going to talk about them again here with Luminite. Uh, racing in hot form she is, career best form. Uh, one of three starts back, her two subsequent runs have been good. She should find the front in this, Darren, and she should go really close to winning it. Um, she, when I say she should find the front, Tide and Time might have something to say about that. That's why I've gone for it uh, in second. I think whoever leads here is the one to beat. Geordie continues to race very well. And Swell Time, I'm expecting something from her at some stage. I'm not too sure if it's this week, but there will be a win there somewhere. Uh, put it in for the top four. So five, one, you could flip them around either way, uh, the seven and then the six. Race number three, Harness Racing Unhinged on Facebook. Trot 2600 gets underway at 5.43. Probably should go back to that previous race and don't forget Ain't No Angel inside second row. It might be a tricky draw for it, but you might want to consider it if you're playing your quaddies. Let's go to that race number three, though. And the River Boy, I've spruced it on Addington News a few times. Went close to winning last time. Uh, just got gunned down, and I think this might be its race uh, uh, on Friday night. So I'm happy to have River Boy, Blair Orange, King Baron, good combo, as we know. Trot to Chevron. It's still got a bit to learn. The motor's there, though. Uh, got disqualified last time, a late break when it was running in the money. Quite like Rakiro Warrior and the way it's trialled up. And uh, is it Kane? Is that how you say the one? Um, I think you definitely want to have it in because obviously the form line suggests that another top four placing is very possible. But the River Boy to break maiden status in the third. Race number four, trackside dining at Addington Pace, and there's still a few opportunities. Again, on the website, there's a trackside uh, icon there, trackside dining icon. Have a look at that, and it's got all the dates and the ones that have already sold out. So 2,600 metres stand, and then we get underway at 6.07. Yeah, pretty keen on better than a diva here. First up run, excellent. Uh, that was first up since February for Bob Butt. Uh, wouldn't need to improve much to be really, really hard to beat here. So... I'm making it one of the bets of the night. To beat Sports Babe, who's raced really well thus far for Henderson Hunter. Uh, she's a filly, filly with a bit of quality, so she's going to win races. She's just taking time to win that first one. Rebound, Regan Todd, always a lot of respect around his barn. First up, another one that's trialled okay. And the elite athlete for Matt Purvis, uh, you wouldn't want to count it out. But I think better than a diva, better than diva, yeah, it can win it down anyway. Race number five, the Avon City Ford Mobile Pace, 1980, the last leg of that early quaddy, 6.33. Flashing light on the top of Harrison's head, wasn't it? Uh, first up, didn't have any luck at all, really found the line solidly. Comes up with a beautiful draw here for trainer driver John Morrison, therefore makes it the one to beat. Soviet Stars done nothing wrong this time in. Terry Neal and Terry Schmiel combining. Uh, Wide-ish front row draw, but uh, a definite threat to Harrison, where's Daddy? Forget its first up run. Mobile should be of excellent assist here. And Sweet Bell, I know, has uh, a gear change. The sliding blinds going on. Smart trainer, Jared O'Reilly. Uh, he'll be doing that for a reason. Therefore, you don't want to leave her out. But I'm all about Harrison in the last leg of that early quaddy. Race number six, really interesting field. The Hydroflow Handicap Trot 2600 703 receives the return of Inheim, a winner of... 300 odd thousand, almost 400,000 in stakes. And Jet was good at the trials last start, Greg. Yeah, it was. Uh, he looked really comfortable and um, he's got a massive chance of returning uh, with a winning run here, although 30 metres won't make it easy. And there's a lot of informed trotters here. Resolve, Maui, my moments now, Tweedledee last start winner, and Car Ress has been a bit of a winter star. So can Enheim win? Yes. Do I think it will? I'm happy to just watch this time, Darren. I thought Resolve was very good 
Um, expect to see it step and, and be right in the fight, maybe trail a Maui. Um, if that happens, those two are off the front. They'll run along a wee bit here, and they'll make it really hard for those off a mark. Um, I, I, I went for resolve ahead of Caress because she's racing so well, Maui and Enheim. You could throw this up and drop it down. And, and I haven't even talked about Miss Crazed. She's good enough to win a race like this. So very interesting go race six. I'm just happy, Darren. It's not a leg of a quarter. Yeah, I think that's why we left it there. If you look at all of them, they've all got winning form, and this is what's been happening with these trotters each week. Um, they've been turning up, and and almost someone different's been winning a race each week. So uh, it's good to have a horse like Enheim back, and and I know Greg and the team have done a lot of work on getting him back. So pleased to see him back at the races. Race number seven is the first leg. Of, no, it's not, of course, because we've got eight races, but race number uh, 11 races, I should say. Race seven is the leading HR and immigration mobile pace, 1980. At 728. I've said this a few times too. These maiden races are really competitive. Like, I, I can see Man United. I thought Man United had already won a race. It's been good in a number of them, and I reckon it definitely can win this. Uh, comes up with Barrier 6 for Brendan Hill. Um, I, I think Man United's a, a good each way chance, and it might be over the odds. James Cagney mentioned that last week that Gavin Smith had a wrap on the horse. Um, I just forget about its first up run, and, and this should suit way better, I think. Chris Lynn has gone some good races. Uh, she's trained by Kim Barron, has Blair Orange. And then I tossed up between Ulta Debonair and Tempo Warrior. I think Ulta Debonair was travelling beautifully in its trial, and, and it sort of stumbled and broke and was uh, out of play. Um, I, I reckon it definitely would have run or gone close to winning that. Uh, the, the odds will be interesting here, Darren. It'll be really Interesting to see what the bookmakers put up and if there is any money for it. And if there is, then I think you need to have uh, Alter Debonair on whatever tickets you're playing into and Tempo Warriors being so consistent. But yeah, I'll have something each way on Man United. Yeah, just from memory, I think, Greg, Tempo Warriors has been drawing badly and of course it's drawn one this time, but I think it's it's had a pretty rough run with draws lately. Yeah. Race number eight, the first league of that late quaddy, the Steel and Tube Hurricane Mobile Pace. And of course, the Steel and Tube guys are, are part of the sponsorship on this night. So, really pleased to have them on course. Uh, 1980, as I say, at uh, 7.55. Yeah, the return of Terry, too, a horse that uh, will be hoping to make its way through to the IRT New Zealand Cup uh, in the second Tuesday of November. Um, again, a little bit happy to watch this week. Not saying the horse can't win because he is capable, but these horses have been racing week in, week out. Heisenberg, Smithy's Terror, uh, Son of Cash, Evangelist, who's been a real find. Um, so I'm happy to settle around those four. I went for Heisenberg. I want him to win a race. He deserves to win another race. He keeps going great races, and he'll get his chance, I think, uh, this week. Over Smithy's Terror, uh, then Evangelist and Sounds of Cash. But like that trot earlier on, Darren, they're racing for 17,500 every time they line up on a Friday night. And uh, these races are just great contests. So, um, yep, I'll, I'll stick with Heisenberg this time. Any of these horses, of course, will be in the video that we're going to show you at the end of the program, which was Hazer winning last week. So it's worth having a look at that from a form perspective. Uh, race number nine, the time-honoured thing, the Darren de Philippi Memorial Junior Drivers Handicap Trot. 2600 at 824. Couldn't speak more highly of, of Darren and the career that he was carving out before his unfortunate tragedy. Um, and this is a race that we all are able to remember him and race at the junior drivers certainly inspire uh, or are very enthusiastic about trying to get a, a drive in. And some of the trainers, Darren, I'll say this every year. I, I can't remember the last time we didn't have a full field. We've got another full field again. Um, the juniors want to win this race. Uh, Colin commented last year that many of them weren't even born when Darren passed away. Um, we're talking, this is the 27th running, uh, but all of the juniors want to win this race. And when you look through this field, it's not going to be easy for any of them. A lot of depth to it. I settled on the Fred Fletcher pair of Royal Pride and Paris Prince, both racing really well. You know my thoughts on Royal Pride. I think he could make his way through to open company. Yes, he has a few tricks, but he's got a huge advantage having Sam Thornley board. Uh, so I'm, I'm very keen on it each way over Paris Prince. I reckon that man we were talking about before, Costa Hare, will play a part here. Show me the grey. It's type of race that go really hard and uh, it'll run on nicely. 
And then you got Carter Delgetti driving for Bob Buck with Lorena Del Sur, who looked something like uh, her best last time. But she has a few chances here. I'll go each way, Royal Pride, but you could you could make a case for most of the 15 in the race. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a good one. Race number 10 is the Spectators Bar Mobile Pace 1980 at 8.54. One thing we should have mentioned, Greg, as we work through the program is Zachary Butcher making his yep. way down to Addington. This is the first time over this next wee bit of time that he'll be down here and he's going to be a regular um, driver on certainly Friday nights and on some Sundays as well. Yeah, and he's made his way into my top four selections here with Rock from a good handy draw for Tom Baggery. I went with Swagger Man. I think he's going to win uh, a number of races and uh, he was excellent last time. Yeah, again, flashing light was on the, on the driver's helmet there. Uh, and I think that uh, he can deliver here and deliver, uh, I don't know about it, good odds, but he, he, he'd be a nice each way bet anyway. Uh, Peyton's Rock for second, nice handy draw, Zach Butcher. The Coleman's got an awkward draw. Uh, if he'd drawn anywhere else, I think he, he would have taken a lot of beating, and he might still very well do. And then you've got the likes of Van Shard and White Star Orlando, who's another one who's got the sliding blinds on this week. I went for Van Shard on the basis, so I think he might go a little bit further than some of these, but swagger man in race number 10 for me. It'll be a really competitive go, this one, Greg, because it's a one win only race. All of the horses have yes. only won one race, one <laughs> race in this race, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Race number 11 is the first direct taxis mobile, 1980 at 9.19. Yeah, tricky one. Mitzi Gaynor is capable of winning it. Why does draw will make it a little bit more difficult? Um, but she's got a bit more upside than most of these. So I went for it over Tommy's on a roll. It'll roll forward. If it finds the front, it'll take some catching. Franco Stefan, who flatters to deceive at times, but um, this is a 35 to 45, and this is its sort of race. So, um, yep, I'm happy to have uh, it in there somewhere. And best trio inside second row. Can get a little bit rough in its gait, particularly in the straight lines, but um, if it does get one shot at them, it is capable of charging home and getting over the top of most of them. Go for seven to beat five, then the ten, uh, the six and the ten in that order. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, a couple of really good bets in the early part of the program. Um, I'm, I'm thinking you can play into better than Diva and uh, Harrison uh, in races four and five. Yeah, look, it's a limited race program, so we're really looking for a, a really good, solid turnover on Friday night. Spectators, of course, open after the last. Uh, we've already scheduled uh, some music in there for a few nights coming up. Uh, we won't do that every meeting, but there will be nights of that, that peaks, but there's always a crowd in there after the races anyway. And, of course, we race Sunday with the Coast to Howe Racing Stables Day. Gets underway at 1 o'clock, all over at uh, 4.14, so pretty quick. Spectators hey, open... Yeah. Just, just before I go, um, I'm over at the Constellations. They've got a big night on uh, Saturday night. They've got four Group 1 races. Ex-Kiwi Doffia Cap can win the Group 1 trot, I think. Uh, Barrier 1, Cam Hart, spoke to him yesterday. So for our Addington News viewers, if they want a bit of an insight, he said, I reckon I can lead and win. So I'm happy to be on it. And I said, what about that horse in the uh, Blacks of Fate? Majestic Cruiser, who we know well, second in the race, won the Messenger. Because I was thinking to myself, Beat Self Assured in the Messenger Championship. If Self Assured was in this race, he'd be favoured or very close to it. Majestic Cruiser's double figure odds. He said he's been set for this race. His record over the longer distance is great. So you might want to take a Cam Hart double. Doff your cap, expat Kiwi, into a horse Kiwi's no Majestic Cruiser. You get a nice old, old double if they both roll one. This is good info, a, a bit of uh, Aussie tipping in the, in the Addington News and, and terrific to see. We'd love to see Majestic Cruiser over here for the New Zealand Cup. Uh, that, would, yep. that would be exciting. We're going to leave you with Hazer winning last week at Addington, a genius drive by Cherie Tomlinson, uh, had a handful of horse halfway down the straight, managed to squeeze through along the fence. He's the rank outsider of the field um, and there was just a blanket across these horses with a number of them particularly unlucky, in particular Cheezel, who never got out all the way down the straight. So, look, we want to leave you with this. It was exciting to see the Tomlinson Ford family winning this race, uh, previously trained by Chris Gherkin. Um, this horse took this race out in Tweedledee also for the Southlanders, won the big trot. So, 
Uh, one week we've got Seed and Shields cleaning house, next week we've got Southland cleaning house. So uh, it was great to have them on course, great to see the horse winning, and we want to leave you with Hazer uh, causing an upset at Addington last week. Point one. Leads by a length on Mogul. In the trail third is Soviet Star from Hazer Three Pigs. 1-1 one, one is Serious Moonlight. And then came Heisenberg. Three wide around them now. Mikey Maguire gets on by Cheezel, who's been relegated to the rear. It's Cruiser at some steady fractions now. By a length on Mogul and Mikey Maguire sent into the race three wide. In the trail for now is Soviet Star from Serious Moonlight and Hazer. Then Heisenberg and two off at the back is Cheezel, working via the IRT stables turn. First quarter in 31. Cruiser leads at a length on Mogul. Three wide out there is Mikey Maguire. Now pressing on, he'll find the breeze. Soviet star in the trail from Hazer, who's three back the inside of Sirius Moonlight. One and a half to Heisenberg. Patiently handled second last and back to the pegs goes Cheezel. Mikey Maguire putting it to Cruiser, passing the 800 metres. He levelled up on the outside from Soviet star in the trail. Mogul won one in front of Sirius Moonlight. Hazer the inside held up. So too Cheezel and just ahead of her is Heisenberg. Mikey Maguire really working. Cruiser over. 600 metres to go. 28.6, 59.6 the half. In behind them, Mogul from Soviet Star. Then came Sirius Moonlight, Hazer, Heisenberg and Cheezel. Mikey Maguire leads at a neck, but he's under a hard drive from Cruiser. Then Mogul held up in behind the leader, Soviet Star. Then came Hazer coming three wide as Sirius Moonlight from Heisenberg and Cheezel. 29-4, third quarter. Cruiser for home, Mikey Maguire the outside, then Soviet star from Mogul, Cheezel, Heisenberg wider, Hayes has got nowhere to go, Mikey Maguire leads, Heisenberg's coming from Soviet star, Heisenberg wide out, move to Soviet star, Hayes are late up the inside, Heisenberg leads, Hayes is flying, Hayes have got up, would you believe the outsider, he was not going to get a run at the 100, got out and got the job done.